Fed has a fiscal problem, not a rates problem. Keith Fitzgerald is the principal of the Fitzgerald Group. Keith, welcome. Good to have you with us. What do you mean it has a fiscal problem? Explain. Sure, I'd be happy to. You know, the government, take it or leave it, it doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on, has a spending problem. As long as that continues, the Fed really has to struggle because they may as well be taking blood out of their left arm and putting it in their right arm. The markets are going to address this, so that's what I mean by that. So what does that leave us as an investor uh, to do when you see inflation coming in basically 2.8%, uh, a little higher maybe than the Fed would ideally like to see year over year, but the 0.4 rise in January is nothing to be terribly alarmed about. What should I do with my money now? Well, you've actually raised a very interesting point. I think now is the time to take a deep breath to stick with what you know, and that's the great companies, world-class companies that continue to put up great results, great numbers, regardless of what the Fed actually thinks it's going to do or what traders think the Fed's going to do. Let's talk about one of your picks and let you make your thesis uh, known on Apple, which um, I think you think is a, is a very good buy at these prices in part because it has now sort of junked its automobile uh, operation and gone all in, clearly, on AI. I do. I see this as another sort of jobs-like moment when he reduced, introduced the iPhone back in 2007, I think it was, if my memory served. You know, this is a moment where you're going to see a pivot, something that is going to dramatically change the way the company is perceived. Tim Cook's been hinting at it. If you look behind the scenes, I think Apple is a lot more involved in AI than the world understands. And whatever happens in June at the developer, con the developer conference, I think is going to take a lot of people by surprise. So I see prices moving sharp higher, perhaps even 275 a share or so. That's pretty high compared to where we sit right now on Apple shares, yep. which are just above 180. Do you have a stake in Apple? Yes, I do. I own it personally. My family does, and our firm continues to recommend it to clients. Got it. Mike, when you look at, at a name like Apple, which has been an underperformer, we used to say, as goes Apple, so goes the rest of the market. That doesn't necessarily seem to be the case anymore. After the announcement, knowing that they're walking away from the car, but potentially putting some more firepower into AI, which has really driven a lot of market growth. Do you feel like maybe Apple's back in the game? We can use that as sort of this market sentiment marker. I would say it remains to be seen, Courtney. I mean, there have been periods of time when uh, it, it's hard to really remember, but when Apple's gone sideways for a year and a half and the rest of the market was up. So it's sometimes a bellwether and sometimes not. My big takeaway from the action of the first two months of this year is that the market has answered some of the biggest criticisms thrown at it entering 2024. One, it's way too reliant on six or seven massive growth stocks, including Apple. Well, you've seen Apple falter. You've seen Alphabet falter and the rest of the market is is hanging in there and actually posting gains. The other one is the stock market is uh, overly dependent on soon rate cuts soon and deep ones. And we've had the revised outlook to say, nope, we're not getting a rate cut in March, maybe not till June or July, and not many this year, and the market's hanging in there. And that's all because nominal growth has been good, earnings have come back, the market has made gestures toward broadening out. I think that's really an important point that, Mike, you just made there, and that is the idea that the market has been able um, against, you know, maybe the popular consensus to make progress even though uh, interest rate cuts are not imminent. They're not coming in March, apparently. They may not come in uh, May, I think is the next one. Maybe not even until the latter half of the year. Uh, Keith Fitzgerald, let's go to one other stock you like, and that is Chevron. Um, what do you, what's your thesis there? Well, again, you know, I'm a big fan of keeping things really simple. This is a case where, you know, the backlash against EV for one reason or another, whether it's pricing, availability, manufacturer challenge, it doesn't matter what. But the point is we're going to need dinosaur juice for a lot longer than we think. The company is cash efficient balance sheet. They've returned a huge amount of cash to shareholders. They're expecting to produce three, four, five percent, maybe even more oil this year. High margin activity. 37 consecutive years of dividend. It's a solid holding that you can count on. Mm -hmm. Keith, thank you very much. Keith Fitzgerald, we appreciate it. Mike Santoli, you as well. Let's go now to uh, Emily Wilkins in Washington.